have some dreamers here today uh, amongst us. Listen, th this, um, this coronavirus and this crisis really does um, bring you down, and, and maybe it, it stops you from dreaming. Maybe it's brought fear uh, of the unknown. Maybe you've, you've felt like uh, th this, we're never coming out of this. Maybe you've even uh, gone into panic mode. I know I, myself, I, I've shared with several of you guys, I was furloughed for 60 days, and, and, and I had one day where I, I was allowed to kind of break down, and, and so that day I was panicking. I didn't sleep all night. I was, I was just worried. But listen, God is wanting to speak to us to dream again. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad uh, that you guys made it out. I'm happy that our English crowd is coming back, so I appreciate it. Uh, I can't see all your faces. I didn't even recognize my own daughter today. She was walking towards me, and I'm like, hey, I'm glad you're, wait, you're my, come in, girl, what you doing? She, uh, I couldn't, I, I didn't recognize her with a mask, and I'm like, you did your hair different today, Mija, I don't, I don't know, but um, thank you for being here. If, if, uh, if you're here for the first time, welcome, um, we're glad you're here. Elder, we're glad you're back from A&M, uh, so, so we're glad you're here, and then um, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad also for the people that are watching us, so I want to give you a shout out to uh, my brother-in-law, RJ, he's watching us online, what's up, bro? Uh, stay with us, all right? You don't want to miss this part four. Uh, Alessandra, my daughter out of Florida, she's watching us right now. Uh, Luis Gustavo is watching us. Eric is watching us. Maria Lopez is watching us. Lily is watching us. Mel uh, Melanie is watching us. Araceli and Miguel are watching us. And a few others that are online, Griselda, Maritza, uh, Ever, thank you for watching, thank you for being online. So as you guys know, we're on YouTube Live and we're on, uh, our, on uh, our CDLF Facebook page live. I don't know what's going on in YouTube, but I am watching the Facebook feed, and I'm glad you guys are there. We're open back up. We're, we're starting to come back. I'm so glad that the Hernandez family is here. Everybody, you know, we're here. Even JJ was excited to come to church today. He's like, yes, we get to get out. I can wear my mask all day long. I promise I won't say hi to nobody, mama. Just let me out, right? So we're, we're glad. We're glad you're here, and, and hopefully next month we're going to, we're going to, continue to follow the, the norms, and then maybe next month we'll, we'll start having um, some kids' classes and make sure that everything is super sanitized, just like we sanitize everything for you right now. But listen, uh, I want to talk to some dreamers out there. I want to talk to those of you who maybe felt left behind, who maybe were laughed at, who maybe suffered some injustices, who maybe suffered uh, racism, who maybe have suffered uh, uh, being, being called a, a minor citizen, who have maybe been laughed at, who maybe said, hey, you're never going to accomplish anything. You're never going to uh, have that business. You're never going to finish that degree. Somebody who, who maybe has, has talked bad about you or been behind your back. Maybe you've had your own family members that didn't even believe in you, own family members that, that, that didn't think you were going to make it or you're going to add up to anything. So I, I'm hoping, I'm talking to some dreamers, but see, let me tell you, dreamers can take one step forward and, and then one step back. Maybe you take two step forwards and, and one step back, and that's, that's kind of what we see in the life of Joseph, and that's what we've been talking about uh, for, for a month now, is the life of Joseph and for us to dream again. So I want to I, I wanna pray, and then I want to get right in it, because I have five things that I want to tell you. I don't want to keep you too long. I know you guys are already kind of hungry. Good thing we don't have football anymore, uh, 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 at least not right now. We don't have any sports, otherwise we'd be watching, you know, waiting for playoff basketball, who I, th I think is going to happen. Uh, Robert, we're, we need a, a, a men's group night at your, your man cave, watching a game when this comes back and grilling some burgers or something. Who's down? Anybody online down? It's nothing but men. Sorry, girls aren't allowed. Y'all have your own group somewhere. Go have coffee, coffee somewhere. <laughs> but listen, go, 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 don't go shopping. Don't do that. Okay, so, so um, let, let's pray real quick. Heavenly Father, I'm so... Uh, happy to be at church today. I'm so happy that, that um, I'm able to, to bring your word. Lord, but more than, than my happiness, I want you, uh, to, Holy Spirit, to come into our heart and, and begin to speak to us. Maybe the whole message doesn't speak to us, but one thing that resonates in our heart, that one thing that you want us to take away, that one thing that you want us to, to stretch our faith, to have us grow. Lord, uh, let, let us become dreamers again. Let us uh, grow in, in, in faith and grow in, in, in 
talent and grow our, our gifts. And, and Lord, let us just continue to, to dream and walk in our dream and walk in the purpose that you have for our lives. I pray for this word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Ashley's on, on now too. Good. And she's watching on YouTube, she said. Thanks for watching, Ashley. And, and uh, everybody else. Listen, so the, the, the title of today's message is The Reward of a Dream. The Reward of a Dream. And, and more than the reward, I'm going to start with the reward. But I want to tell you that really the, the, the payoff, really the, 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 the reward is, is not at the end. The reward is in the journey. Many of us want, want that, that one thing, have that dream of getting a new car and having that new car smell. And then you, we get the new car. It smells so delicious. It's so new, the AC, everything. So I don't know, if, if, you're, if you're Latino like me, you keep those little papers that it came with. You know, the, 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 the papers that they, give, they put on there. You keep them for like six months, right, because you don't want to remove it, right? And, um, and, but, but it smells like new. You wash it like every weekend. You make sure you park like 45 minutes away from Walmart and then you walk to Walmart just so that nobody dings your car. You know, you, you, it's, it's, you, you go to a restaurant, you park in the handicap. No, no, you don't do that. You, you know, you park kind of outside and then, and then walk in because you, you take care of your, your car. But what, what, that was your dream. But what happens is after a while, you, you don't have time to, to wash that car anymore. After a while, it doesn't smell so new. After a while, you start seeing everybody bought the same car you did and the same color. And then after a while, you're like, now I want a new car. Now, have a better, now, have a, now they have cars that drive themselves. Now, now they have, you know, the backup camera or now they have the, you know, the ones that park themselves and all kinds of stuff. You know, you, you, you buy a car, six months later, the new edition comes out and now you feel like it's not new anymore. And, and many times you, you get to your destination, to your final point, and you realize it wasn't even about, about that big, big, big accomplishment. It was more about the journey. So sometimes you're studying for a degree, Elda. You're studying for a degree, and it's great. You have that big accomplishment. But then you get out, and, and what? You get the degree, and then now you have to pay the bills. Now you got to work for the rest of your life. Now you don't get to just hang out and... and, and Play video games and be there with, with your friends. Now you have responsibilities. Now you have things. So, so, so you know, it, 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 feels, it feels like, you know, the, the dream itself doesn't complete you. And we'll talk more about that next week. But, you know, there's a reward in the journey. There's a reward in the journey. And that's what I want to talk to you. But first, let's go right into the word. Genesis chapter 49, verse 22 through 26, we have Jacob. And Jacob, it sits down all his kids. This is after Joseph had already, uh, was sold at 17. He was sold into slavery. He was taken to a foreign land. And uh, then, then he ended up at Potiphar's house and he took a couple step forwards. He learned how to administrate things. He learned how to run a business, how to run the, the Potiphar empire, right? Potiphar enterprise. He learned how to do all that, but then he was wrongfully accused of a sexual crime, right, of a sexual abuse that didn't happen, so he was thrown into jail. And then there he had the, the favor of God again, and he was, a, he was called upon to administrate the, everything that happened in the jail cell, right? You guys know that, that if you get to jail, they're going to work you. They're going to have you cleaning, you know, the freeways. They're going to have you, have you making, you know, uh, uh, Making things and, and, and selling them. I was, I was telling the, the English service how every, from what I've been, I've been told is that every Chick-fil-A on the bottom of the, of the tables of Chick-fil-A, there's like a placard or a number there in each table. And so those tables are made at a prison. That's a program that Chick-fil-A has for a prison uh, ministry, and so they, uh, they provide work for them, and they pay them, and, they're, and, they're, um, uh, and they put the stamp down there and stuff like that, and, and they, you know, preach to them and stuff like that. So, so even nowadays, there's, there's, there's work in, in prison even now. So he was in prison, and he had favor. But then he was able to, to interpret dreams. Two years later, uh, after, after interpreting the, the cupbearer's dream, he moved on to be part of the governing body of the Egyptian people, right? Right under the king. He was part of the 
cabinet, you would say, maybe, of, of the king. And it, the king said, hey, you have access to all my kingdom except, you know, I'm, I'm the authority over you, but everything else you can do. Right? And then, and then his, his brothers came. He sent off so they could get his father and bring his other brother. And finally, they kneeled before him. His dream came true. And this is after all of that. After all that happened, okay, I just kind of wanted, wanted to give you the timeline. So after all that happened, Jacob is getting ready to die. He brings all his children around him. And then in verse, in chapter 49 of Genesis, he starts to bless his children. He starts to prophesy over them. And um, he, even, he even curses a few of them. Because let me tell you that, that when, when, what we see him do is that the blessing that each one received was based on the relationship that they had with God. Many of us want to be blessed, but we don't want to have the relationship with God. God wants you to have a relationship with him so you can have a bigger blessing. Okay, so and, and it wasn't just the relationship that they had with God, but that blessing or that curse was to affect the future generations of those people. Now, if in chapter 49, we see that everybody got about two verses worth of blessing, right? About two verses. But then for, for Joseph, we get like six verses. So we go to verse 22. And it says, Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near a spring whose branches climb over a wall with bitterness, archers attacking him. They shoot at him with hostility, but his bow remains steady. His strong arms stayed limber because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, because of the shepherd, the rock of Israel, because of your father's God who helps you because of the almighty who blesses you with blessings of the skies above with blessings and deep springs below blessings in the breast and womb your father's blessings are greater than the blessings of the ancient mountains than the bounty of the age-old hills least all these rest on the head of Joseph and the and the brow of the prince among his brothers Jacob received a bigger blessing. Jacob received uh, no condemnation. No, no, uh, he, he didn't receive any cursing. He received a blessing and an abundant blessing, a bigger blessing than all his other brothers. Now, we dreamers, we dream of that bless, blessing. We dream of that career. We dream of that dream job. We dream of that, our business taking off. We dream big dreams. And those are great dreams. Many, many, many people that come from, that are migrate to the United States come here dreaming. You can be a dreamer whether you're, you're part of the, the Immigration Dream Act or not. Okay, but, but we come here for the American dream, for the American dream. What is, what is your American dream? I don't know. You know what your dream is. A beautiful house, a, a, a great business, to be able to see your grandchildren, to have financial independence, to, to have uh, great friendships, to have a, a, a great um, a, a relationship with your spouse, to travel the world, to you know, make a difference, to, to, to be a part of a ministry, to innovate, to make music, to make films, to, uh, to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, to be an engineer. I don't know what your dream is. But let me tell you that the reward is found on the journey, and that's what we see with Joseph. Joseph didn't allow wrongful things that were committed against him to become excuses to run away from God. So if you're taking notes, the first thing I want you to write down is, number one, be faithful to God even if you were wronged by others. Be faithful to God even if you were wronged by others. Joseph was wronged by his brothers, by his own family. He was hated. Man, he had haters. The haters were way back then in Genesis. They were already haters, right? Right? Even, even among, among uh, Adam and Eve, they had Abel and Cain as sons. And then y'all remember, Cain was all jealous of Abel's, of, of Abel's uh, offering. And he, he hated on him. There's been haters from the, from the first family, all right? So, so it, it wasn't new to Joseph, but Joseph had haters in his own family. Later, he was wronged by Potiphar's wife, who accused him unjustly. So there was already wrongful accusations. This is not just a thing that happened in Minnesota right now. There's been wrongful accusations even, even in the time of Genesis. 
There's been, there's been uh, law enforcement that have done unjust things, right? Last week, we, we prayed over that. And by the way, this Thursday, this Thursday, we have a prayer for, our, for, our, for America, for our nation. We're going to be praying a group of pastors here at our church uh, between 8 and 9 p.m. this Thursday. So I invite you to, if you want to make it, uh, you're more than welcome to come. It's going to be mainly like a Facebook, YouTube live event. So we want you to tune in and share. We're going to worship a little bit and pray for our country. So um, I invite you to, to join us, okay? But... Uh, even while he was in jail, he was forgotten. Joseph was forgotten. Remember, he interpreted the dream of the cup, uh, cup bearer while paying a crime that he didn't commit, and he was forgotten. But he was still faithful. Many of us are faithful only if it belongs to us, only if it affects my dream, only if what's in it for me. If nothing's in it for me, I don't want to be faithful. If I'm not going to benefit from it, why do I need to be faithful? Why, why, why do I need to be faithful when things are bad? Do, do I have to have faithfulness in the middle of the coronavirus? God, why are you allowing this to happen? God, why did I, I lose my job? God, why, why are people getting sick? Many of us only want to be faithful in the good times. Many of us only want to be faithful when we're motivated. Joseph wasn't motivated. Joseph didn't have his family. Joseph didn't have the backing of his father or his mom. He didn't have the backing of his family. Joseph continued to be motivated by his relationship with God, and he was faithful even when he was done wrong. Listen, some of you may have been fired from a job unjustly. Some of you may have been stopped unjustly. Some of you may have been laughed at. Maybe you, you, were, you were wronged by your own, your own family like Joseph or just other people. Maybe you were accused of things just like Joseph was. But Joseph was faithful. Joseph was faithful to God even when other people did him wrong. And in the journey to fulfilling our dreams, there's going to be people that do you wrong. There's going to be people that laugh at your dreams. There's going to be people that, that don't believe in you. There's going to be people that say, look at that guy. He's a minority. His, 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 his English is really bad. Or, or look, look, at, look at her. It's a woman. What can a woman do? What can, what can a person who went to South Houston High School, what can a person who went to San Jacinto, what can a person do that, that barely even finished seminary school? What could a person do that, doesn't, that didn't go to Harvard or didn't get all A's or whatever it may be? There might be people that have wronged you, that have laughed at you, that didn't believe you, that talked behind your back. Maybe people that you thought were going to help you were actually people that were trying to trip you along the way. Maybe the people that you thought were going to be faithful to you were the people that were stabbing you in the back, talking behind you. That happens, and it's not new now. It happened to Joseph, but you have to be faithful. Don't let things uh, that, that went wrong in your life ruin your faithfulness to God. Don't let other people that are trying to wrong you ruin your, your faithfulness, faithfulness to God. Genesis, uh, the, the second thing I want you to write down, be effective in every step of your journey. Be effective where you are even in the present time. Joseph was effective in every single step of his journey. Joseph did his job and he did it well. He did everything, everything that he did for Potiphar prospered. My, I imagine that, that Potiphar said, hey, listen, I want you to, to, to bring hay to, to my camels and attend them. And all of a sudden, they were the best attended camels. And, and, and they had a great, great sat, their saddles were always ready. They were always fed and, and, and energized, ready to go. I mean, he took care of the, of, of the camels in, in, a, in a great way. And then Potiphar decided, you know what, now I'm going to give you the, the horses, let me, give you, let me let you attend to the horses. And then you know what? Let me move this other guy out of the way. And, and, and let me make you manager over everything. Over Potiphar Enterprise, Inc. I'm going to make you manager over everything. So I'm going to give you my American Express. You have, you have the credit that I normally get. You have, um, you, you have un unlimited buying power. You can go buy anything that we need. You can go attend. If you need to go somewhere, take the fastest Ferrari car Porsche that I have. Right? The... The, the horse, and, and, and you guys have to remember, the Egyptians had a lot of gold and a lot of things, so he, Potiphar, who worked for the government, had a lot of great possessions, 
and, and everything was handed down to administer to Joseph. Why? Because Joseph was effective at every journey. Joseph didn't affect that he was wrong before to affect his new chapter. Maybe you were wrong in the past. Now, now you're in a new chapter. Maybe you're, in a new, you're with a new boss. Maybe you're in a new school. Maybe you're in a new grade. You're in, a, you're in the next phase of your life. Let's, let's continue to, to, to be effective in, in the journey. Genesis chapter 39 verse 4 tells us that Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted him to care for everything he owned. When he was wrongly accused and taken to jail, Genesis 39 verse 20 and 22 says Joseph's master took him and put him in prison. He was placed there uh, under the king's prisoners uh, where, where they were confined. But while Joseph was in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness, granted him favor, and in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison, and he made, respo- and he made him responsible for all the things that were being done there. He put him in charge. So even, even in jail, he was effective. They noticed he had gifts and talent. He had the talent of administration. He had the talent of of being able to to organize teams or organize people, get the work done. You know what? I'm going to put him to work. The warden's like, let's just put Joseph over that. And now we have a new project. Let's let's put Joseph on on top of that project. You know what? Let's just put all the project managers to report to Joseph so that Joseph can run the whole thing. He was effective. Now, my question to you is, are you being effective where you are now? Many, many of us don't want to be effective uh, if we're working somebody else's dream. Being in jail wasn't Joseph's dream. Being in Potiphar's house wasn't Joseph's dream. But he was effective. And let me tell you, he was, he was effective even though he didn't have any experience. Because when he was young, he was a favorite. He was wearing that, that colorful robe, that, that Gucci type of robe that his father gave him that separated him from everybody else. He couldn't do any of the hard labor. He couldn't do any of the hard work because he was a favorite. He was at home with dad while all the others were working. As a matter of fact, they used him more for Uber Eats than to do the work. That's why he went to go with his brothers to take him something to eat. He, was, he didn't work hard. He didn't learn any of the skills at home. He learned them at Potiphar's house. And then he excelled. So not only did he learn a skill, he learned it well and continued to learn and grow. Maybe you haven't moved, God hasn't blessed you in that other chapter, in that other thing going towards your dream because you're not effective where you are now. Maybe we need to be a part of building somebody else's dream so that you can learn before God gives you your dream. Many of us, don't want to be effective if it's not in it for me. If there's nothing in it for me, what do I have to win? What, why, what, why should I do it? And that's the wrong mentality. And, and I want to encourage you not just to be effective, but to be extraordinary. And that's how Joseph, Joseph was. If you're at school, make it, make it a better school because you're a student there. Get the best grades. If you're at work, make it a better place to work because you're there. If you're at home, make it a, 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 a better home. We're, our daughter's out on vacation without us with some friends of ours, but we're happy that she misses us because we have a good home. She misses being with her family. She's miss, she misses being at home, even though she's at the beach having a good time. She doesn't miss us too much, but, you know, she, she misses us. If, if we're, you're at home, make it a good home, a home where your kids want to live and be at and, and want to come back to when they grow up and leave. If, if, if you're running a business, make it a good business. Not a business where people go one time and not come back. No, a business where people want to come back. This is, I just got a haircut out. I don't know if you can tell or not, but hey, can we get a zoom on that fade right there? How many cameras do I have? They make me a little big. But listen, during this quarantine, I went and I got a haircut, and this guy did such a great job. I went back a second time. And I already told him, I'm like, hey, man, I'm coming back. Because he did a good time. If, if, If you have... A good, if you have a business, make it a great business, a business that people want to come back to. Not the business that people go one time and you rip them off and they don't want to come back again. Make it a good business. Be innovative. Be creative. Be different. 
Be better than the rest of the people. Be better. And that's, that's how Joseph was. So don't just be effective. I want to encourage you to be extraordinary where you are right now. If you, if you have the dream of running a business, run somebody else's business extraordinary right now. If you have a, a, a dream of getting a degree, be the best student right now. Okay? All right, number three. And, and I noticed that I missed this point during the morning service because I preached at both services. So this is almost like bonus to you guys, okay? <laughs> I, I talked too much, and I missed a couple points. But number three, my wife said, you missed three and four. I said, okay, well, I only had five. All right, number three, be trustworthy. Joseph was faithful to God even in dark times. Joseph was trustworthy. That's why Potiphar could hand him everything. That's why the jail warden could hand him all the job, because he was trustworthy. Now, let me ask you something. For God to give you favor to run a business that will help more families and, and employ more people. For God to give you favor to, to, to uh, and I looked this way and I saw you, Daisy, but for you to make a difference in, in your student's life and more, and more generations to come. For, for God to, to give you more favor, you got to be trustworthy. Can can we trust you? Can, can, can your boss trust you right now to get the job done? Can, can you be trusted where you are right now? I kind of kid with my kids, but I can, I, and my wife has my wallet, so she can be trusted with my wallet right now. And, 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 I, and I kid with them, but I don't kid with them. And I'm like, in my wallet, I have a credit card that has a monthly $10,000 limit. Because my job, they trust me with that. And I don't have to tell them what I'm doing with it. I, I need to go buy something for, uh, the other day I, I messed up my, a screen for my phone. I went in, I got a new screen at, home, at Best Buy. I needed a, a keyboard for my iPad. I went in, I got it at Best Buy. I, I needed to buy a plane ticket to go out of town. I used my work credit card. I needed to, to take a customer of mine to go play golf and then take him to a steak dinner. I don't know why I needed to do that, but he, I needed to. It was just a need. I use my work credit card because I'm trust. They, they trust that I am making good decisions. I'm not just taking anybody to eat. I'm, I'm taking somebody to eat so that I can increase business. I'm not just flying and going on vacation. I'm going on a business trip. I'm not ju just buying devices. I need this thing so I can type my, my work emails while I'm on the airplane. I got to be able to answer my phone so my phone's got to work. They trust me with $10,000 monthly. Can you be trusted? Can you be trusted with $100? Can you be trusted with a small business? Can you be trusted with, with one children so that God can bless you with four or five? Can you be trusted? Some people can't be trusted with a cat and they already want to get married. You can't be trusted with a hamster. Oh, but you're looking for that wife. You, you, you got to be trustworthy. And that's what Joseph was. Joseph was trustworthy. I want to encourage you to be trustworthy. Can, can somebody rely on you to finish the project? Can they rely on you to get the job done? Can they rely on you to keep it under budget? Can they rely on you to make a difference where you are right now? You have to be trustworthy. Number four, continue to serve God even in the worst of times. Joseph ministered to others in his darkest time while he was in jail, while he was wrongfully accused, while he was sent there for a crime that he didn't commit. He still served other people. Many of us only want to serve in the good times. It, it, the day's got to be perfect. It's got to be sunny, and it can't be over 90 degrees, right? If it's a beautiful day, and, 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 and I had a raise, and I feel grateful, then I'm going to go and, and serve, serve for God's kingdom, but, but, if, but if we have a, a coronavirus, if I got laid off, I, I can't serve. Many of us have, have gifts and talents that we're just sitting on. Not Joseph. Joseph used his gifts and his talents everywhere he was, even in the darkness of times. He was abandoned. He was hated by his family. He was in a foreign country with, with a foreign language, and he still served Potiphar. He was accused of a, of a crime he didn't commit. He was in jail, and he still served the, the jail warden. Later, he served the king of Egypt, even though he wasn't Egyptian. 
even though he had been sitting in an in a Egyptian jail for a long time. So can, can you be counted on? Can you continue to serve God even in the worst of times? I told this story that I came back to work two weeks ago, and I've, I've been having a lot of work. And um, I, I, I was telling this story earlier, and I want to tell you that in this time, I just mentioned that I was furloughed for two months. And in this time, I had one day where, where men had allowed one day to, to just kind of freak out, right? So I had that one day where I was allowed to freak out. And that day that I was like, oh, what if this thing lasts a long time and my budget and... and our finances, and what if somebody gets sick, and what are we going to do? How long is it going to take for us to, uh, you know, go back to church? And I was just freaking out over everything, but especially our finances. That one day I was freaking out. My wife came to me, and she said, you know what? God was talking to me, and I think that, uh, um, I think that we need to help this, this, this family out, and we need to give them some money. And I looked at her, and I said, look, Tell God that we live in the same house, and he needs to talk to me. And you and, you and God need to make it to my budget meeting, you know. <laughs> and, and that night I couldn't sleep, and then I couldn't sleep for like a week because I was just thinking that God was speaking to me from my, from my wife and was telling me, hey, this is not a time to hoarder. This is not a time to clamp down, even though I'm in the worst of times, even though I we're in a crisis, even though that I need to be watching every single dollar, every single penny. It's not a time to, to hold tight. It's a time to, to open. And, and, and in order for me to receive, I got to give. I got to empty out my, my, I got to empty out my pockets so that I can receive. I can't, re I can't, God can't give me anything if I'm not giving it. If I give, God is going to give me. And then uh, we, we finally made a phone call, and, and we finally uh, gave the money, and then we've been helping at, sir, at church, and we've been serving and, and coming. And I know many of you have. And Bobby was coming every week with big gift cards. Appreciate you guys uh, and Carla. And, and, and let me tell you that the people that were giving, we were, we were open on Sundays from 2 to 3. And the people that were coming to give, to give gift cards, to give offering, to give of their time, were the people that were mostly blessed during these next two months. We would come and I'm like, hey man, what, what can I pray for you? I don't have anybody sick. Well, uh, can, can I pray for work? Well, I'm already working. Well, let's pray for more work. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We're here to pray. Let's pray for you. We're, we're at church, right? We're in the parking lot of the church. We, we didn't even know what to pray for because they were giving and God was blessing them at the same time. Many people that weren't giving weren't being blessed. The people that were giving were being blessed. And, and, and I, I gave up my finances, but I also gave up my time. I've, de I've dedicated more time to, to church and church activities while I was in the 60-day furlough than, than now that I'm back. Listen, God wants you to serve even in the worst of times. Joseph had that God-given gift of being able to interpret the dream. And when he had the opportunity, he interpreted the cupbearer's dream and the baker's dream. What is the God-given gift that you have? What, had, what talents and gifts has God put in your life? Are, they, are you active in them? Are you working in them in the good times or the bad times? Or are you just sitting down and waiting for the right time? Today is the right time. This year is the right time. The world needs you. The world needs you to make a difference. The world needs you to proclaim the good news. The world needs you to take Christ to them. The, the Lord needs you to be his hands and feet. Today, right now. Could it be that God has been waiting to fulfill your dream because you haven't served in the worst of times yet? Because you've been picking and choosing if and when you can serve. Joseph continued to serve even in the worst of times. Number five. Joseph had to forgive and forget in order for his dream to get fulfilled. And, and, and let me tell you. While Joseph was governing Egypt, during the years of the blessing. The king of Egypt gave him a wife. And, and I hear that Egyptian women are really pretty. Cleopatra is one of the prettiest women according to, to, to histor historians. And she was Egyptian. 
they gave her a beautiful wife who gave him some beautiful children. And this was before the famine came. This was before his family finally came to him and his father came to him and they kneeled down and before his dream came true. During that time, Joseph had his first son. And in Genesis chapter 41, verse 51, it says, Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, it is because God has made me forget all my troubles in all of my father's households. See, in order for the next chapter to begin, in order for your dream to be fulfilled, in order for, for that next step, that, that next promotion that God has for you, in order for that, that, next, that next part in your life, some of us need to learn to forgive and forget. Before Joseph's dream was fulfilled, he had to forgive his brothers. Before he was even able to see them, he had to forgive them. Joseph had, had to learn how to forgive him and, and, and forget about it. Sometimes we have to stop being bitter of our past. We have to stop being angry at, at other people that did us wrong. We have to stop being angry at that ex-husband that you have or that ex-wife that you had or that ex-boyfriend or that ex-girlfriend or that ex-boss that treated you wrong. Or maybe it was that father that didn't believe in you. Or more, maybe it was the, the mother that, that, uh, that was mad and angry at, at you and, and said you would never amount to anything. Maybe it was a family member. Maybe it was a best friend that stabbed you in the back. Somebody that made fun of you. Somebody that didn't, didn't believe you at all. I don't know. But we need to learn to forgive our past hurt and forget. And that's what Joseph had to learn before his dream could come true. Maybe it's not other people. Maybe the person you have to forgive and forget is yourself. Maybe you're the one that made wrong choices. Maybe you're the one that, hang, that was hanging out with the wrong crowd. Maybe you're the one that made the mistakes. It's okay. In order for you to turn to the next chapter, God's telling you today, you need to learn to forgive yourself and forget the past. God wants to fulfill the dream that he has for you. But part of the journey is forgiving and forgetting. Before Joseph's dream came true, his children were born. In Genesis 43, 45 verse 3, we read about the reunion Joseph had with his brothers. And it says, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. In my, is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified in his presence. Maybe they thought he was gonna, he's gonna put us in jail. Oh my God, Joseph is alive. Oh, he's gonna have us beaten. He's gonna kill us. He's gonna torture us. We're about to pay everything that we did. But verse four says, then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said to them, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Listen, God wants you to forget, forgive people and forgive yourself and forget the past because many of us need to know that your past can be your future ministry. That maybe you're going to be, your past is filled with alcoholism. And maybe your ministry is to, to minister people with, that, that, that have uh, substance abuse. Maybe, maybe your past can be your future ministry. Maybe God can turn around and use it for your good. And we don't just sing about it, but we be about it. We don't just sing that, oh, yes. We actually believe God. That's what, that's what we see in Joseph. We see that he trusted that all of that, God used it for good. So I don't care how ugly your past is. I don't care how bad people have treated you. I care about today and, the, and your future. And for a better future, you need to learn to forgive and forget. Joseph had the opportunity to get back at them, to punish them, but he didn't. At this time, you may, not, you may not know why God allowed you to suffer. You may not know why God allowed you to, to be wronged. I just want you to know that in due time, you will know the purpose of a dream. 
the purpose of a dreamer. Next week, we're going to talk about the purpose of a dreamer. I don't want to, I don't want to go into that, but I, I do want you to know that next week, we're going to talk about the purpose of pain, the purpose of suffering, the purpose of blessing, and the purpose of famine. But for now, I just need you to know. I just need you to know that you know that you know that for you to fulfill your highest potential, that for you to be able to reach that God-given dream, you need to learn to forgive and forget just like Joseph did. And I want to end with this. I want to tell you that at the beginning when we saw Jacob and he had all his children and he was blessing Joseph and he blessed him big time, he blessed him more than any of his other children, he also cursed two of his children. So I want to take you there. Chapter 49, verse 7. We see Jacob is talking about his son Simeon and his son Levi. And he says, Cursed be their anger so fierce and their fury so cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob and disperse them in Israel. He was cursing them to, to, to just be dispersed in the land to not be a strong people and united and, and, and to not have the purpose that his other children, the, the blessing that his other children were receiving. But many years later, whenever Moses brought the Israelites out of Egypt, Moses went up to, 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 the, to the mountain. You guys remember he was getting the Ten Commandments? And then the, uh, the, the, the people of Israel decided to melt all this gold and even though they had walked in the in the in the in the in a dry in the in the dry red sea and even though they had eaten manna and even though they had seen the lord work in miraculous ways they still made a a cow or a bull to to worship you guys remember that right and so when joseph when moses came down in exodus chapter 32 verse 26 he says this is talking about Moses. It says, so he stood at the entrance of the camp and said, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied around him. All the Levites that were cursed, they rallied around Moses. Because they were rallying not around Moses, but around God. In verse 29, you, we see, then Moses said, you have been set apart to the Lord today. For you were against your own sons and brothers, and he has blessed you this day. I want to tell you that maybe you were cursed. Maybe your parents cursed you. Maybe your friends cursed you. Maybe society cursed you. Maybe you haven't received any blessings, but nothing but curses. You have a choice today. You have a choice today to run, to rally towards God, to rally towards what's good, to rally towards your future, to rally towards the destiny that God has prepared for you. But it's your choice. And if you do that, the curse goes away and the blessing comes. The Levites from then on were set apart so that they could take part in the worship and in all the things that the, that the, that the, uh, the church would, not, not the church, but the temple would need. It was the Levites that were set apart right then the same guys that were cursed so before we conclude today i think there might be somebody watching and i think there might be somebody here today that needs to know that today is your day that you forgive and forget today is your day that you start doing the right things at work and being extraordinary. You start thinking outside the box. You start being creative. Today is your day to start being trustworthy. Today is your day to being effective and is your day to, to, to being uh, faithful to God. I want you to open up your heart and I want you to accept Jesus Christ. And just like he did for the Levites, he's going to set you apart for his dream for his purpose, for what he has for your life. So I want you to stand up on your feet. And because we're a family, we're all going to do this prayer together. But if you're doing it for the first time or if you're coming back to Jesus, I want you to let me know. Okay, we're all going to do it, but please, please let us know because we're keeping count on that, but, but, but mainly because we want to continue to pray for you and, and bless you. If you're watching, I want you to do this prayer with us. And then I want you to send us a message telling us that you've done it. DM us or just send it right there, however you want to do it. 
Don't let one more month go. Don't let one more year go. Stop chasing your own dreams without God and start chasing the purpose and the dreams that God has already wanted for your life. Let's pray together. Say it with me, dear Heavenly Father. Come on, church family, let's say it loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today and I open up my heart. I receive you in my heart as my Lord and Savior. Come and clean me, clean all my sin, take away every hate, take away every hurt. Help me to forget, help me to forgive. Help me to move to that chapter that you have for me. Help me to dream again. Help me to have purpose again. Help me to fulfill the calling that you have for my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior from this day on. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want to pray for the rest of us. Right where you are, just bow your head. Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for showing us with the life of Joseph that we are, that we need, we can have setbacks, but the setbacks are only setups for the blessing. Lord, and in, in these setbacks, we need to learn to be trustworthy. We need to learn to be effective. We need to learn that sometimes it's our time to, to fulfill other people's dreams so that we can be prepared to fulfill ours. Lord, and that we need to be faithful even if people have wronged, wronged us. Lord, and, and that we need to innovate and be creative. And Lord, that we need to serve you with the God-given talents that you've given us and the gifts that you've given us in the good times and the bad times. And Lord, help us forgive and forget others that have hurt us and ourselves as well. Lord, we come before you and, and, and we ask that this year may be a year of expansion, that this may be a year of dreams, that this may be the year that I have the, the that, that we have the best year ever, Lord, that, that, we, that we start living, leaving all the sin behind and living for you. That we understand the calling that you have for us. That we understand the dreams that you have for us. That you, we understand the purpose that you have for us. Whether we're at home or whether we're at work. In everything that we're doing, we want to be faithful to you. We want to make a difference. And we want you to fulfill our dreams. Lord, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen.